Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the magic that is auto firewall. So real quick, we're going to undo what we did. And we'll remove this rule. And then we'll remove the LAN. And let's see if it'll let us apply this. Uh, LAN interface is required when hairnet. Uh, hairnet. 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 No. Hairpin nat. What a day. All right, so let's manually do some, some forwarding here. So we're going to create, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into our firewall policy and we're going to do a WAN. We're going to look at our WAN in. And we are going to add a new rule that uh, allows 80. And it's going to accept, and it's going to be TCP, and it's going to be destination 80. So we'll move this guy up. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to NAT. And we're going to create a DNAT rule. And this is going to be web server. And the anytime you see something with an asterisk, a blue asterisk, that is a required field. Anytime you see the I inside of the dark circle, that is a little, if you hover over that, you'll get this little box over there to the right that gives us that awesome information. So what we're going to do is our inbound interface would be our WAN interface. And your translation is, is going to be the uh, the IP address or the server inside that you want to forward to. So you can see that is 192.168.1.2 port 80. We can enable logging which is nice and then we specify the protocol so it'll be TCP. If we don't specify, specify a source that means that everybody can get to this which is you know likely fine. And then if you've got multiple IP addresses, static IPs, uh, assigned to your WAN interface, you could enter that here. Or since we've got a dynamic address, we can just select our interface. And then we can also put port 80 in the destination port. Um, you need to do that actually. So then we'll save this rule. And so between the firewall policy and then this DNAT rule, now we've accomplished the same thing as port forwarding, but we've done it in a way that we can see it. So what does this look like if we open up the CLI? I'm glad you asked, because I'm going to show you. So before, where we had that auto firewall rule, so now you can see there's a rule 20 that, oh, I accidentally put reject on there apparently. Hold on. Aha! I caught me just in time. So we're going to accept, not reject, accept. That'd be embarrassing trying to troubleshoot that at the last moment. It's a good thing uh, that we went ahead to look at this. So that's saved again. So now let's open this back up. All right, so you can see we've got rule 20 now in the firewalls. This allows port 80. Action is accept. Destination is port 80. Log disable protocol TCP. Okay, so now instead of that, that automagic stuff that's happening here, now you can see that we have, have a NAT rule. It's rule 1, description web server, destination is our uh, the address attached to ETH0, port 80. 
inbound interface at ETH0 inside address is 192.168.1.2 port 80. Logging disabled. Protocol TCP type destination. So you can see that it's an entirely different way that it's even represented in the configuration. So with you know the auto firewall, it's very, very simplistic. In my opinion, if you can do it this way and you're comfortable doing it this way, you get a much a much more refined, a much more actually a much more granular control over your firewall. So I, I really prefer this if you can get away with it. You know, if you can't and port forwarding works for you, that's great. Like I said, I'm not going to recommend one over the other out of the chute. You know, we've got to look at, you know, the use case, the scenario, and then make a decision. So if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And we'll see you back at the next firewall video.